Hi folks and welcome back to my video channel and in this video which is part number two we are going to be looking at some more practical things on the Smith's Thaco. In part number one we actually adjusted a Thaco, we looked on how it all works and we did it on a workbench. Now I can understand not everybody has those tools to do it that way so now we're going to do it on the vehicle itself with a running engine and we'll hook up a measurement Thaco like a strobe light with a Thaco built in and we'll compare it with the instrument panel or the techo that's fitted in the car. Now to do so, we'll have to remove first of all the techo from the car because otherwise you can't get to the adjustment potentiometer. Once it's removed, we'll be looking at the opening in the techo itself, the enclosure, if you can get to the potentiometer. In some cases, there is no opening, so you will have to open up the techo and we'll look on that on how you can open it. And by the way, guys, this is my way of doing it. And then uh, we hook it up uh, to the car, have the engine running, and then we basically will adjust it. We'll then also have a little bit of a chat on the different RVI types, uh, because I have to happen two of them, so I can show you the difference, because I don't know what your car will look like. And then we talk a bit about the RVC type. I don't have one to adjust, but it's interesting to know uh, what an RVC is and how you can hook it up. In fact, I do have one, but it's not an original one, and we look on that. And then finally, we'll talk a bit about ignition, electronic ignition types, and what is the result on your tachometer if you fit a electronic ignition in your car and what you have to do. And to conclude, I will be looking at upgrading my TACO to a V8 and I'm doing it a bit different than calibration, uh, but you'll see that in the, at the end of this video. So I hope you enjoy this as much as you enjoyed part number one. And I guess if you're more a practical person, you will really enjoy this part much more than part one. So let's get on with it. So folks, before starting to adjust your tachometer out of vehicle, you're going to need a few things. First of all, you're going to need a bunch of test leads and you're going to need those leads to clip them on to your wiring loom and to extend it uh, to your uh, tackle, which is going to be outside your vehicle. So that's the first thing you're going to need because without that, it's going to be very hard. The second thing you're going to need is actually a tachometer. Uh, I have a strobe light in my case and I can set it up as tacho. So this is going to be my reference. So you need a reference techo in this practical setup. All right, so let's start by removing uh, the techo now and then we hook it all up and then we give it a try. Removing the meter from the uh, dashboard is fairly simple because it's held in place with two brackets like this, one on each side. And you have to undo this uh, weird looking screw completely and therefore you have to uh, lay down in the footwell and you can reach to the back and then you can take off these brackets yeah? and these are the brackets so you have to take off both before you can push out the meter. Now when you push out the meter uh, it may be a bit sticky so push it from the back. Now over in general the um, wiring loom is long enough um, to be disconnected once the meter is out of the vehicle. This is the fun part, crawling in the footwell, and uh, me as a 59 year old guy, it's not that easy anymore, but anyway, it's gotta be done, right? So let's do that. And we remove the actually screws, right? That hold the taco together, and that should be not that hard. All right, and now when the screws are removed, we can gently push it out from the back. You don't need to remove the wiring loom first. Uh, you can do that later. So here it comes, right? So let me show you that a bit closer. So now with the taco removed from the back, you can actually slide it out very easily to the front and start to disconnect the cables. Now that's not that hard. There's only a couple and the light bulbs have to go out as well. And if you're not sure about the cables, then mark it where they go that's it and it's out here we got the two rvi meters so the inductive types and you would think in the first glance they look exactly the same with the exception that one is a negative word and the other one is a positive word type but for the rest you would expect it the same but if you look in the back now all in a sudden that is no longer the same, is it? Um, 
yeah, we've got a power plug here and a power plug on this one. But then we used to have on this type, remember the wire loop to pick up the pulse from the ignition. Now this one doesn't have something like this, it has two sockets. Well, in fact, this is the same as that one, but the wire loop is now built in at the inside and I'll show you that in a minute. So there are different variants uh, in the vehicles over the time, as I explained before. In addition, this one has no hole to adjust the potentiometer, while the more recent one, guess what? We've got a hole right there to adjust uh, or calibrate the meter. So that's a good thing. Now, one thing I wanted to mention to you guys, because somebody made a very good remark. If you're going to adjust the potentiometer, then you should do it with a plastic screwdriver or an isolated screwdriver because this chassis, this is negative ground or it's positive ground. It depends a bit on what vehicle you have, but you don't want to make shorts. So if you're going to adjust the meter enclosure, then use a plastic screwdriver. It's, if it's outside the enclosure, then you can use a metal screwdriver, then it doesn't really matter. So let's open up those two babies here and then Let's have a look at the difference uh, between the two. Now we'll open up this guy as well. Right. So let's open them up. Hopefully, that's one. The second one. That's number two. And if you look closely on this one, let me see if I can turn it around. You see this, the leads going in. You see the leads going in. And then here you have actually the wire loop. It has a wire loop. These are the white wires, but now it's built in in a bigger uh, transformer. Where this one doesn't have the wire loop, right? It has a, and it has a very uh, little transformer sitting right there. So here on the older type, you had to build your own wire loop. And on the newer one, the wire loop is at the inside. So that's the only difference. You can see the potentiometer here. And strangely enough, uh, this is a 50 ohms one versus the potentiometer on this side uh, is quite different. Now, the circuit board on this one is built with two, one transistor. That circuit board is built with two transistors, I, as I explained in the previous video. So even the electronics at the inside are different, but both kind of functionality-wise are the same. And both are adjustable uh, with these potentiometers. Okay, so we got the tackle removed from the vehicle and now we have to open it up to get to the potentiometer inside. Now the TACO by itself, just to show you real quick, uh, has multiple parts and here they are. So you have the enclosure, then you have kind of a bezel that goes in front of the actual um, meter, like so. That's how it fits. And then of course you have a ring and this is the ring. And that ring has inside a rubber. And you can see that this rubber is really deteriorated. It's really in a bad shape. And that's the kind of ring or the piece that is gonna cause you a lot of trouble if you're trying to open up the uh, meter itself. And then of course you have the glass and here is the glass and that fits inside. And then everything you know, kind of fits together like this. Then the meter goes on here. and then the enclosure comes across it. That's how simple uh, that really is. Now, um, the issue is a bit how to open it up because it can be quite tough uh, to open that. And if you look over here, you see these little uh, bend over clips on the uh, chrome ring and you see it all around the meter. So these you have to prime a bit with a small screwdriver. You might want to use a screwdriver and prime this off a little bit, but not too much so you don't damage the chrome ring. Turn it around, prime it off a bit, go around the next one and keep going. And keep doing this until it becomes loose. Uh, then you might want to use a very, very uh, small screwdriver 
uh, or a knife and go in between the sides, you know, Let's see, and try to prime it off uh, like so. So, and you just go around and keep gently priming it. You know, don't force this, okay? Uh, keep going until it becomes loose a bit. You might as well, when you have these holes here, where these lips should go into, uh, you might want to take out any debris or uh, leftovers or deteriorated uh, seal that's in there. So you have uh, space to eventually turn it off. So that's what I had to do on this one. And then finally, uh, you, meet, you will need to twist it off. So like so, until these clips line up with the holes, right? And then you can lift it. Now in practice, guys, this is not going to be that easy to do that. Uh, this is going to be very tight. Uh, so you might want to have a, a friend of yours to hold it like this with his two hands while somebody else is really turning it like this and then, you know, lifting it off. So this is how you have to get it off. It always works. Uh, what I've done as well in the past, I sprayed actually DWD-40 on it and let it sit for a while and then that worked just perfectly. But have a look on this seal and this was a tough one to get off. You see that, how bad that seal is here? I mean, this is really badly deteriorate it and you know and that can cause the ring to stick real tough so once you turn the meter loose you can take it out and then in the back you will see a couple of screws uh, you have four of them now the ones that are inside through the hole do not remove those these are holding the meter together at the inside so they're holding the printed circuit board into the meter but those two are the ones that you need to undo to release uh, the meter from the enclosure. So just take a screwdriver and um, release those. Now watch out in the back there that you do not damage the uh, needle or the dial because now that's wide open and there's no more protection of the glass. So that's one. We do the second one. So now the meter is kind of loose and now you can basically lift it out. So I'm gonna put the glass back up to lift it out, turn it over, and then push a bit, because you need to do that, and slide it off. There we go. And now we have the meter open, and now you can get to the potentiometer, which is uh, right here, and I've explained all this before in my previous videos. So this is the way to do it, guys. Um, very easy. So this is the wiring loom underneath the dashboard and we have the two light bulbs and we don't need to do anything with those. But then we have the um, ignition wire and these are the two sockets that we have in the back of the taco that will have the current sensing circuitry on it. So those we need to extend. And this is the uh, plus 12 volt supply and of course we have the ground lug and all these uh, connections we'll have now to extend with our test leads. So now we're going to connect every wire one by one uh, with our test leads and we'll feed it back uh, to the outside of the car where we have the dial or the tachometer laying on a test bench. So do it one by one, but make sure you don't get no shorts and that you know exactly what wire is what. We have taken the meter out of its enclosure and now we're going to connect it the way we are supposed to connect it. It's a one by one lead, so I'm going to connect the plus 12 the ground and the wire loop. I have the taco rigged up and if you look carefully then you see that this is the taco that I calibrated in the lab before. So now let's see how good it is on the car. And I created the wire loop because this one had an external wire loop. Right? The one that came out of the car had the internal wire loop. I'm going to hook up the taco. There we go. And this is going to be our reference. Let's crank up the car and see what the RPM meter tells us and the techo from the car. And I think this is uh, pretty much spot on. So now... Um
that is about a little bit below uh, 1300 so so now we can adjust this one a little bit just to show you how you can do this see how you can adjust it there you go you can crank it up below or less so that's what you would have to do guys adjust it to the rpm that you want and then adjust the meter accordingly so folks, now you've seen how you can calibrate your taco. Um, and in fact, you can even calibrate a four cylinder taco to run on an eight cylinder, but be aware it's not gonna be 100% accurate across the full range. What you also have seen is that in part one, we uh, adjusted and calibrated the taco uh, for an eight cylinder for this car, uh, which was a four cylinder taco. And now I took it out here to the car and I hooked it up. And as you could see, it actually <laughs> was spot on. So the lap measurement and the method is correct. Uh, but here we did a practical uh, adjustment uh, and it works both ways. So that's a bit up to you on how you want to do that. But I am not going to fit this tachometer back into this car because I'm going to go for a RVC type and more specifically a new eight cylinder type. Now, you don't have to. Uh, and if you want to convert between an RVI, which is an inductive type, and an RVC type, then all you're going to need is run an extra cable from your, uh, bat uh, from your negative side of your ignition coil all the way back to the meter to the input. And of course, you will have to short the connector uh, for the old loop, current loop, in the back of the old taco, which is, of course, now removed. If your car had an RVI meter, then this was the plug that would go to the back of your RVI uh, meter uh, or you had a wire loop. In my case, I had the plug. So all I have to do on this one now, if I put an RVI meter in or that new meter is just connect the two together, basically. Plug them in like so. Connect it. Done. I'm done. That's it. And if it was a wire loop, well, then you don't have to do anything. It's already connected. So there's one last thing you need to do then, of course, is run a wire from the negative side of your ignition coil or your ignition system, depending on what system you have, back to this meter removed. So that's one of the things you will have to do. And that's easy. Um, there are some other considerations if you're going to have a full ignition, uh, electronic ignition. Uh, most of the time, uh, if you fit a full electronic ignition, so no more an ignition coil, you're going to have some issues with your taco uh, unless there's very special provisioning on the actual ignition electronic ignition system that you're putting in by itself but most of the time you won't have that so you're going to be facing a problem that's why if you put a electronic ignition in meaning a full ele electronic ignition replacing the breaker points and the uh, high tension coil then in that case uh, you will probably have to get rid of your rvi taco and fit an rvc so one which is direct driven with a pulse um, that is the way to do it and buy an electronic ignition that has that kind of an output pulse uh, these are the things i can just recommend to you i'm sure some of you have done it so maybe you can comment on that I'm not going to put back in the four cylinder taco even though it works perfectly and it's calibrated and all this I just going to put in an eight cylinder taco with the label eight cylinder on it because I like to be my things a bit perfect or better so um, let me show you which taco I bought because that's a programmable one it's actually built by the folks that are were building before the Smith's tacos but now it's a new company name and you can buy those on your parts store and they're really great and let me show you uh, what that is so this is the new taco uh, it's for an eight cylinder and you even see the red mark area is correct uh, it's smiths as well but it's of course a full electronic one and in the back you will have a lot of different connectors here you go see all these cables here uh, and that allows you to connect it to any kind of system if you have a full electronic ignition you can hook it up if you don't have it and you only have an ignition coil with um, electronic breaker points then you can hook it up if you have an ECU in your car, then you can hook it up as well to the ECU. So you can hook it up to all kind of solutions on your vehicle. So I think this is a really great meter and it runs you about 150, 160 pounds, I believe. So I think uh, this is a nice replacement uh, for your MGB GT. Unless, of course, you want to recalibrate your four cylinder taco and put that one back in. That is going to work as well as I've shown you. So now let's see if this is going to work and I just want to show you because this is actually an RV, RVC um, 
RPM meters, so direct input. So they don't come as uh, RVI, so inductive types don't exist in this model. So uh, you will have to modify your cabling a bit, but that's easy because all you need to do is connect the two um, wire loops all you need to do is to connect the loop that goes in the back of your old taco cut together and that's it and then run up one single wire from the negative side of your ignition coil back into one of those leads and then for that you need to check of course the data sheet that comes with this uh, taco so let us hook that up and then show you on how this is going to work and the input signal for that taco is the negative side of my ignition coil so it's the lead which is going to your breaker points or your electronic breaker points now, if you have an ECU in your car, you should use another. You should connect this to the ECU output. But I don't think any of us has an ECU in our uh, MGs. So um, let me turn on the car and see how that runs. Of course, you also have a dial light on this, and that's another wire to connect. But that's all stuff we can do later. Uh, so uh, we're going to crank up the car and see what it gives us. And as you can tell, this meter is working just perfect. So folks, we are near to the end of this video and we looked in this uh, video on how you can actually calibrate your RVI uh, tachometer and I stands for inductive type. Um, we looked at the two different models as well. We took it out of the dashboard. You've seen that we even opened up the meter to see the difference between two generations of uh, RVI meters. Um, we talked briefly about the RVC meter and in fact what I've shown you is a modern type on a, of an RVC. That was the last meter you saw, the last Tacho, and that's what I'm going to fit in mine and you might wonder why. Well the main reason why I'm going to fit this is that because the red zone on the dial is correct and it says eight cylinder on it and it's a brand new one. Uh, so um, that's why I'm doing it. But if you don't want to do this, you can use your four-cylinder Tacho and adjust it as I've shown you. Uh, that all just works fine, but it's not going to be 100% accurate. Where this Tacho, the new one, the RVC type, um, which is direct coupled from the negative side of your ignition coil, uh, is going to work much better and far more precise. Now, one more note. Um, now for those of you that are planning to install a electronic ignition in your vehicle, so I mean a full electronic ignition replacing the high tension coil and the breaker points, everything embedded in solid state uh, technology, then you might have a problem if you have an RVI uh, tachometer because you won't have those leads anymore that will sense the current and in fact the whole uh, electronic ignition doesn't have that provisioning. Uh, unless you buy a special one that actually mentions explicitly that you have that capability for an RVI meter. If not, then you will have to modify your RVI meter. In fact, you will have to replace it with an RVC meter and then you have to make sure that the electronic ignition that you're putting in is actually having an output um, for that. So these are the things to look for. Uh, so I hope that this video was interesting enough and and I hope to see you on my next uh, video on something else on this MG and by the way guys if you have comments or any recommendations feel free to do so because I'm doing things the way I'm doing things and maybe there are better ways that you can teach me thank you and I'll see you in my next video bye bye